Welcome to the Strategies for Success Online Summit 2015. I am so, so excited. Let me introduce myself. I am your host, Gina Batty. To celebrate the launch of my new course, which is called Discover Your Direction, I decided to reach out to seven experts from around the world to have conversations about the things that keep you up at night. So listen, I'm not here to live by half measures, and I know that you don't want to either. For all you persistent, determined, strong, and confident women out there, I know you will resonate with this, and this summit is for you. Let's get straight to it. If you're unsure where you're heading, and you're looking for guidance on how to figure that out, and if you want to figure out why you're here, and your purpose in life, and you want to know how to wrap the things that you're passionate about around your vision and your purpose, and you want to get your hands on strategies to keep you focused and to feel fulfilled, this is where you need to be. Look at me. I used to be a UK size 16, which is a US size 12. I turned my life around by focusing on three areas. The first was mastering my body. The second was mastering my self-belief and my mindset. And the third was mastering my mission and purpose in life. As you can see, I've gone through quite a transformation, not only physically, but also mentally, emotionally and spiritually too. My work focuses around personal mastery, specifically focusing on those three areas, body mastery, self-belief mastery and mission and purpose in life. I work with strong and confident women where I'm a high performance personal mastery coach, best-selling author and one of the UK's leading public speakers. So what is personal mastery? Personal mastery is about being persistent in effort and stubbornly tenacious in attitude. It's not about being perfect every day. As I said, it's about being persistent and stubbornly tenacious. It's about being focused and determined and believing in yourself and believing that anything that you dream about, you can make happen. I am so, so excited to bring you eight mastery experts from around the world and they will all be under your roof. I'm bringing to you strong and confident people who work every day to master themselves and their craft. They know to their very core that personal mastery isn't a one-time investment, a quick fix or a short-term goal. They know it is a lifelong investment. If you're truly working on personal mastery, is there ever a finishing line to that? My answer would be no, there's never a finishing line to it. There may be pauses where things are going great and you demonstrate that you're skillful at mastering situations and events in your life. If you go back and reflect on your life, even the most strong and confident people feel like they're, they're getting kicked in the gut and are challenged to get back up at certain points in time. And at those points, it requires new skills to master that moment, that new kind of moment that you're experiencing. In my experience, it takes a minimum of three months for you to be able to take something new, be it a new skill, a new technique or a new strategy, and to put it into place and start to see some changes. These new skills, techniques and strategies are exactly what we're going to tackle in my new course, Discover Your Direction. More about that later on. The aim of the summit is to pull back the curtains on personal mastery and explore life-changing teachings that will set you up for success. So who will you hear from? I am talking to Michelle Cameron Coulter, Olympic gold medalist, about discovering your passion. I'm talking to Glenn Morshower, one of the busiest character actors in Hollywood. We're talking about alignment and intuition. I'm talking to Sharon Lecter, the genius behind the Rich Dad brand and currently partnered with the Napoleon Hill Foundation. We're talking about vision and living a life of significance and success. I'm talking to Dr. Bill Dorfman, celebrity dentist and New York Times bestselling author. We're talking about goal setting, masterminding and leadership. I'm talking to Ros Savage, MBE, who holds four world records for ocean rowing and is the first woman to row solo across three oceans. We're talking about courage and collective consciousness. I'm talking to Eric Swanson, award-winning speaker and success coach about productivity and habits for success. And last but certainly not least, I am talking to Dr. Joe Vitale, best-selling author of numerous books, law of attraction expert, and featured in the movie, The Secret. We're talking about overcoming procrastination. There's a special bonus for you too. To celebrate the launch of my new course, Discover Your Direction, I'll be hosting a live webinar. We'll be talking about discovering your direction and explore the key learnings from the summit. Be sure to check in with all the conversations. You will learn something from every single one, I promise you. 
It is my mission to invite people around the world to step into their power. I offer you that invitation now to step up and realize your full potential. I invite you into our world, into our lives, where you'll hear from eight mastery experts. What we have to share with you will start you on your journey to realizing your full potential. Ask yourself here and now, are you all in? If you are, let's go, let's do this. Okay, I've got such a special treat for us here on the Personal Mastery Summit. I am joined by Dr. Joe Vitale. Now, let me just introduce Dr. Joe Vitale very quickly for you, so you know who it is that I'm talking to, and we'll get cracking. Joe Vitale is the author of way, way, way too many best-selling books for me to mention right here, but his latest are Zero Limits, At Zero, and The Secret Prayer. He's recorded many Nightingale Conan audio programs, such as, uh, let's see, The Awakening Course, The Missing Secret, The Secret to Attracting Money, The Ultimate Law of Attraction Library, and his latest release is called The Zero Point. You may have seen Joe on the big screen. He's been in the blockbuster The Secret, as well as many others. But what you might not know is Joe... One of his most recent accomplishments includes being the world's first self-help singer-songwriter. And to date, he's recorded 15 albums, which is absolutely fantastic. And we're going to talk to Joe about that in just a few moments' time. He also created the Miracles Coaching Program, and he helps people achieve their dreams by understanding the deeper aspects of the law of attraction and the law of right action. I so love that concept. So we'll be finding out a little bit more about this later on. Joe was once homeless, but today is a best-selling author who believes in magic and miracles. Joe, it is such an honor and such a privilege to have you here with us today. I'm so excited. Welcome. Oh, thank you. I've been looking forward to this. Thanks for including me and inviting me. I appreciate that. Oh, you are very welcome. Honestly, it's such an honor to have you. So Listen, tell us a little bit about your backstory. Tell us who you are, where you've come from. <laughs> well, I came from nothing. <laughs> came from nothing. Struggled. I was homeless. I was in poverty for 10 years. I was struggling through it all. I was, boy, it, it, the road has not been easy and it has not been fast. But over time, I was able to climb out. I was able to start writing books. I was able to start doing some things. I lived in Houston, Texas. Got some of my books published there, started to do some speaking there. And of course, when the internet came along, I moved everything I was doing and put it on the internet, and that helped explode. And then over time, I started writing books on spirituality, and one of them got me invited into an unknown movie, my very first movie, and that, of course, became The Secret. And The Secret shot me into outer space. I mean, I became known around the planet and been traveling everywhere. So I've written 50 books. As you mentioned, I'm a musician mm -hmm. now with 15 albums. I've got all kind of DVD courses. I travel speaking. I do programs like this. I've got my Miracles Coaching Program where people get worked on one by one. And I have new products. I have new books. I'm working on new courses. I have new things going to be happening pretty soon. So I'm, I'm blowing and going. I'm not the... <laughs> unhappy blowing and going i like that yes I, i'm doing it i'm having i'm having fun i'm having a blast and, and you I, can absolutely tell that wow <laughs> well, i think that's what life's all about you know you want to enjoy it you want to follow your passion follow your calling and when i finally start doing that that's when life got better that's when life got better and i think that's one of the secrets everybody needs to realize is that it's not about doing what everybody else wants you to do yeah it's about what your life calling is, your mission, your passion, mm -hmm. and following it. Despite any evidence around you or support for it, you need to follow that. That's what I did to get out of homelessness and everything else. I was just going to ask, yeah, so is that how you stay focused throughout it all? Yeah, I've stayed focused by following my dream. Yeah, People wow. would ask me, you know, after I came out of all of this, they would say, uh, what's the one thing you did to get out of poverty? What's the one thing you did? And they're, they're looking for a magic pill. You know, they're looking for the one book, the one audio, the one course. 
And it, it used to bother me until I realized that there is one thing. I did everything. Yeah. That's, that's the one thing. I did everything. I read all the books. Everything. I did all, I, I did, yeah, I did all of it. But at the core of it, all kidding aside, at the core of it, I was following my own personal dream. I wanted to be an author. I wanted to write books that made a difference in people's lives. And that was the goal that was in front of me mm. that I kept following until it actually began to pay off. So, yeah, that's, that's the secret. Follow your passion. And you are totally living your dream. There's so Absolutely. many people that, you know, I told people that I was interviewing you here today. And the amount of people that have, have responded going, oh, my God, I love that guy, you know. Really? And I'm like, yeah, seriously. I've just been oh, inundated with praise and honestly. So that's why I'm so excited because everybody wants to hear from you. And they wow. want to, you know, they want to connect with you. So congratulations. Well, thank you. That's flattering. You know what, though? Here's the secret that everybody needs to realize is that I'm simply following my dream. Mm. And in following my dream, other people have been influenced or they've been inspired. Yep. But that's just what's happened to me. When you follow your dream, and I don't mean you personally, but I mean anybody listening or watching follow their dreams, the same kind of thing happens. Time goes by and at some point you end up being interviewed or you end up reflecting or you end up talking to somebody and they say, you know what? You changed my life. Yeah. And you'll say, why? And they'll say, because of what you did. And you'll say, all I did was what I was here to do. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. I'm just doing what I'm here to do. And if there's applause around me, wonderful. But I didn't do it for the applause. I was doing it because I felt like that's my life mission. I've but been, you did it for you. Yes. I did it for you, for me. For and you, not me. I did it for you. Not me, you. <laughs> yeah, I, did for, I did it for somebody. I don't know who I did it for. Yeah. <laughs> but wow, what such a testament. I mean, you've you've had a total reinvention of yourself in that process, which is just, you know, absolutely. Well, well I'm still reinventing myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I reinvented myself when I went from the poverty victimhood mentality and decided to be an author. And I reinvented myself when I was going through poverty and decided that I needed to be self-sufficient. And I reinvented myself when I became an author and I wanted to own that. And then I had to reinvent myself to become a speaker because I didn't want to speak. I was shy. I was backward. I was reluctant. It's like, I don't want to be in front of people. I don't Not believe a, that. Leave, leave me with <laughs> my books. Leave me in the library. Just let me, I'll be quiet. But, and, but I had movie before. I had to recreate myself to be able to own that I could be in a movie. Now I'm in. Gosh, I think I'm in 15 movies and more are coming out. Wow. Which is cool. And then I reinvented myself as a musician. I didn't have a musical background. When I was in my late 50s, I decided that I wanted to learn how to play music. And I, I had fears about it. I had concerns about it. Yeah, when I was 57 years old. And then by then, four years passed, and I've got 15 albums out. And then most recently, I decided that I wanted to learn how the strong men of the world bend horseshoes and bend nails and do all kind of crazy stuff. And I, I took a course in it, and I've been practicing bending horseshoes and bending nails. And I'm, wow. recreating, I'm recreating myself as Strong Man Joe. That I'm is fantastic. I'm still doing it. But you know what? It's not about me. It's about following the passion. And when I get excited about something, that spark fires up within me. I'll just go, I want to learn about that. And I'll, I'll learn everything. I picked up the saxophone a year and a half ago, the baritone saxophone. Yeah. And I heard one for the first time. I picked it up just a year and a half ago, bought one, took a couple of lessons, went in the studio and recorded a whole baritone saxophone album. Why? Because I wanted to, because, because I was propelled from inside of me. I think all of us have that kind of, nudge within but most of us procrastinate most of us talk ourselves out of it most of us come up with excuses not not me not now i don't have the time i don't have the money we've heard all of them i don't do that i did once but whenever i did that in the past nothing happened i got no results i didn't move i didn't stretch i didn't grow i didn't accomplish so i've learned that when i follow my dreams and i take action then all this magic happens and I get to get excited and tell people about, like you about this. Absolutely. Wow. So talk to us about procrastination. What are your yeah. thoughts? 
Well, first of all, it's about the number one thing I hear from everybody is that they'll say, I, I'm procrastinating, yeah. procrastinating, what do I do about it? And there's a couple things they need to understand. There's at least a psychological view about this and a very practical view. Okay. The psychological view of procrastination is they're not taking action because they're afraid. They're either afraid of success or they're afraid of failure, okay. one or the other. Most people would be easily identify with fear of failure. They're just afraid of looking foolish. Yeah. And what I've looked at there is whenever I go to do something that's new for me, I have to ask myself, if it doesn't work out and I'm deemed a failure by the rest of the world, well, I'll still be okay. Well, I'll still love myself. Will life still go on? And obviously, yes, to all of those, I'll just keep moving forward. So the fear of failure is kind of an illusion. There really isn't anything as failure. It's just kind of feedback. You find out what works, you tweak it a little bit, you find out what doesn't work, and you adjust yourself and you move forward. But then there's the fear of success. And a lot of people don't look at that because they assume that, well, why would they be afraid of success? But a lot of people are afraid of having more money. They have a bad relationship with money. They think money's evil. They think it's bad. They think it's going to corrupt them. So they don't really want it. And success often brings more money. So they have to be at peace with money. That's an important thing right there. And then they have to look at things like notoriety. Sometimes success makes you more famous, makes you more known. And a lot of people don't want that. They don't want to be visible. And so they figure they'll just hide. Mm. And so these are some top level elements that they look, have to look at. It's like, are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid of success? or both. And you want to dilute both of those. Because I have found as soon as you clear any negative beliefs in your head about anything you want to do, you collapse all the interference and you accelerate down the road and manifest whatever it is you wanted. That explains why I've written 50 books. I got no interference in me to write a book. It's that all gone. It's gone. Yeah. That yeah, explains yeah. why now I write 15 or I record 15 albums because there's no interference in me. There's no self-doubt. There's no procrastination. I go and do it when the impulse is there. And then we want to look at the, the practical aspect of procrastination, because one of the things I've noticed is that sometimes people procrastinate because they, they're looking at a giant project and it's overwhelming them. And what they need to do is break it down into a really tiny first step. Yeah. That and makes long, a lot of sense. Definitely. Well, it, it's so much easier that way. It's much like if I go to write a book, if I think of writing 300 pages, it can be overwhelming. Not so much for me anymore, but if it's the first time for somebody to write a book, it could be overwhelming. But if you told yourself, I'm just going to write down the title, and then I'm going to write down a line, and maybe another line, and maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get a page or two. And if you do that in a, in a year, you've written a book. If you do enough of those pages in a month, you might write the book in a month. But the whole idea is sometimes people get overwhelmed because they have an idea to open a business or to do some sort of project, and they're just facing the elephant in front of them. And what they need to do is reduce it to what is the very first little itsy-bitsy step you can do right now. Do it. And after that one, you ask yourself, what's the next little step that I do? Do it. And do you find that you're always guided on what that next step is going to be? Yep, because that's, that's a great question because the step you take reveals the next step. Absolutely. That's the other thing. A lot of people procrastinate because they sit here going, well, I want to do the project, but I don't know how to get from here to all the way to the end. You don't have to know how to get all the way. You don't need to know that bit. No. No. You need to know what's the first step. You take it. And then the second step is apparent at that point. You take it. And then you look around and go, what's the next step? By taking those steps, you get to the end mm. over time. But it's a little bit like driving your car at night across the United States or Britain or somewhere else. <laughs> and you just start up and you turn on the headlights and you can only see as far as the headlights. You can only see 100 feet or so. You drive the 100 feet and the next 100 feet becomes visible. That's how you get through procrastination. So it's a matter of psychologically looking at any fears and then practically reducing the overwhelming project into very manageable baby steps and just start taking the little steps. Sure, sure. Do you think that people are always conscious that they're procrastinating? Not at all. I think most of us are unconscious to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know that, of, I, I talk about that quite a lot in my work. I 100% agree with you on that. Yeah, I think life is about awakening, and most of us are running by default on programs and beliefs we got when we were little kids. Yeah. And so we have a whole lot of automatic behavior and automatic thinking that's going on, and we never stop to think about it. This is why it's so important to, to do shows like this so people can have something to stimulate new thought mm -hmm. or to be in miracles coaching and work with somebody that's actually going to reflect back to you your beliefs yeah. but I would say the average person isn't aware of this all they do is say things like well I want to start my project but I can't get around to doing it you know I got to go do the laundry or I feel like I'm too old or I'm too young or I don't have enough money or I don't have the education I don't they just go on and on with it and don't really stop to ask are those beliefs are those excuses are those illusions? Can I question them? You know, when I decided to be a musician, I was in my late 50s, all the fears came up about being one. So I had the intention and the goal, I want to be a musician. Mm -hmm. But then all the thoughts about, I didn't sing in the shower. I didn't have any, I didn't have any experience. <laughs> I like guitars, but I only need three chords. I've never been in the studio to record a song or sing one. And so all the doubts started to come up, and I could have stopped. This is the important thing. Mm -hmm. I could have stopped. But instead, I looked at him and I said, where's the proof that I can't do this? Where's the proof that I can't learn how to sing? Where's the proof that I can't learn how to play a guitar? Where's the proof that I can't learn how to write a song? Where's the proof that I can't go into a studio and actually record my own material? And when you look at it with that sort of awareness, you realize there is no proof. You may not have done it before, but that doesn't mean you can't learn it. And as soon as I wiped away all of those, man, I started cranking out albums. You know, 15, and a, actually. 15 in a few years. And uh, wow. <laughs> And so um, most people are not aware to answer your question, right? Absolutely. And I think you mentioned a couple of really key points there. One is about raising your awareness. Yes. And being, you know, thinking, okay, so is it a belief or, you know, is it a fear? What Kind of naming it. What is it that's going on there? Right. And once you have named it, it's then thinking, okay, so show me the evidence. Where is the evidence to prove all of these fears or beliefs? And mm -hmm. then start to challenge them. So do you want to yes. carry on with that thought or that belief or... Um, yes. the, the fear that's there or do yeah. you want to move past it and if you do step on over it yes and start taking the first steps and exactly. as you take those first steps you actually gain strength you gain faith you gain confidence you gain inner power as you take those steps because now you're moving in the direction of your dream when we when we sit back and we just come from fear life really sucks <laughs> I mean we've got no energy, we got no enthusiasm, we're not happy, nobody around us is happy because we're coming from fear and we know deep down we're not following our dream, whatever it happens to be. But when you come from the opposite, when you come from faith, when you choose to believe in yourself, when you believe that I'm at least going to go for it, and let's find out what happens. At that point, you have more, you're almost a superhero. You've got all this energy in you, all this power, all this enthusiasm, and the people around you like it as well. And that, that will propel you to move forward, to actually manifest and create the thing you want. I think that's so powerful. Everything that you just said there, you know, it comes back to self-belief and faith yeah. and confidence. And, yes, you know, yes. I've been interviewing quite a lot of clients and, you know, um, I, I do a lot of international speaking. And when I'm out there, the, the biggest things that come up in most of the conversations that I have, uh, people aren't clear on what their vision is. They don't have a plan. They don't goal set because they don't really know what they're setting goals against. But then mm. the, the biggest, the second biggest thing really is about confidence and having faith and really keeping focused on that vision once they've, once they've got it. But that all comes from faith and belief. And if yeah. you don't have that, then, you know, you, you're going to really struggle, don't you think? Yeah, and you don't have to have it in, in terms of how most people think. Mm. In other words, they yeah. might say to themselves, well, I don't have any faith. Well, the way you get faith is to act as if you already have faith. Yes. That's a, a famous William James quote, just act as if, and you will start to gain the very thing that you said you were lacking. So you pretend it first, and then as you pretend, you'll find yourself actually doing it and living it and becoming it and owning it. 
But you also said something interesting because you said a lot of the people you interview don't know what they want or they don't know what their vision is. Mm. And I wanted to, if you don't mind, I wanted to address that for Please, one yes. moment. Please, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because I think those people are not aware either. I think that they're conning themselves. Mm. In reality, I have, a, I have a tough love approach to that. I usually tell people who say I don't know what I want, I'll look at them and say, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you're lying. Yeah, not again. <laughs> you're lying. And what I mean is that people don't want to admit what they want. They don't want to admit it to themselves because as soon as they admit what they want, they either have to come up with excuses for not going for it or they have to actually go for it. And That's so for, really interesting. Yeah. Well, Sorry, carry some, on, carry on. Yeah, for some people it's easier just to say, I don't know what I want, <laughs> wish I did. But no, they do. Underneath those concerns and underneath those fears, they know what they want. They've got a secret desire, a secret passion that maybe they they played touch and go with in their mind, but they haven't owned it. And I'm pushing people to say, let's own it. This is where your life is going to change. Own the very thing you want. And I tease it out of them. I'll say, when you were a kid, what did you want to do? When you weren't worried about money and anything was possible, what did you think that you might do later in life? And here in the United States, we have the super lottery and the power lottery and all that. And whenever it goes up to like a half a billion dollars, I tell people, if you won that, and I'm not encouraging people to gamble. I don't say go buy lotto tickets. It's a prosperity <laughs> exercise. Yeah. And I'll say, if you won that and you had $500 million, whatever that is in pounds and so forth, and even after taxes, you're going to go home with hundreds of millions of dollars. What are you going to do? I know at first they're going to buy cars and shoes and houses and travel oh, and all that. <laughs> but one day they're going to wake up on the beach and they're going to say, okay, I'm tired of that. What do I want to do to serve people? What do I want to do to express myself? I know people personally who have come into great wealth, and for a while they just kind of relax. But then they actually go back to work. I know one guy, he loves cars. He's now a car salesman. He's independently wealthy. He doesn't have to work. But because that's his joy, he went back and took a job. So I ask people, what is it that you would do if you had that much money or you weren't afraid, there were no fears whatsoever, and you were honest with yourself, what would you do? Because from there, you can set the goal, you have your vision, and then you can start looking at what are the baby steps to take to start bringing it into life. And that's really interesting. A lot of that comes back to <laughs> connecting with yourself and asking yourself some really powerful questions. You know, and you, you mentioned a few already, such as, um, and, and quite a lot of what you mentioned, I ask a lot of my clients too. So it's things like, you know, where do you feel the most alive? And, yeah. you know, what kind of activities do you do that make you smile all of the time? Yeah. You know, and it, it might seem a bit silly asking yourself those questions, but they're so powerful because they dig so deep, you know, and they really, totally agree. they get to the core of, of you, really. Yes. Yes. So many people are, like we go back to again, so many people are, are so afraid of asking themselves those questions and, and reflecting on their life that they mm -hmm. just don't do it. Yeah. And I totally agree. I love those questions. Like, where do you feel most alive? Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful one because that really is revealing what their true nature is and what they really want to do with their lives and what their passion, their life calling, their life mission happens to be. This is available to everybody. It's not really hiding. This is not esoteric locked away knowledge. It's something that's very practical and that anybody, anybody watching can use. And so they just need to tease it out of them and then get past the, the self-sabotage, you know? That, Interesting. That monkey, yeah, the monkey yeah. mind that's always telling us things that we buy into. And that goes back to procrastinating. That goes back to limiting beliefs. That goes back to excuses. But we want to believe in ourselves and take that action to co-create what we want. Absolutely. I could talk to you forever about this. This is so exciting. <laughs> I'm having to contain it right now. Right. I, got, <laughs> I got a couple of really great questions that I'd love to just get your perspective on. Okay. And the reason I'm asking you these is because they stopped me in my tracks. I just kind of went, oh, that's interesting. Oh. So the first one is, do you think procrastination is always a bad thing? Ah, no, I do not. Because I think that there is such a thing as divine timing. I think that there is an ebb and flow in the universe itself and that you have a, a part to play in that flow. 
And I wasn't going to even talk about this because I know that th this is real and there is a timing thing, but it's so easy for people to, to come up with the self-sabotage excuse of, I'm not doing it right now because it's not the right time. Mm. That's dangerous because they could be right. It could be that they need to wait for a prime moment to take whatever the action is. Sure. But what I've seen more often than not is that it's a self-sabotage moment that people throw out there to say, well, that's why I haven't taken action. The timing isn't right yet. Well, I don't know that that's always true. And it requires acute, ruthless honesty and sensitivity to know in your own heart Mm -hmm. Is it a matter of timing or is it a matter of sabotage? That's interesting. That's really interesting. And, and I, I hope that gets people at home thinking about that. Yeah, and that's all we're asking them to do is. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of just finding in within yourself. Is it the right time for you to do this? For example, with all the books that I've written, I have a couple more ideas for more books. It shouldn't shock anybody. And <laughs> doesn't shock but, me in the slightest <laughs> but, but you know I don't feel the timing is right for me to begin them in this moment okay now, now based on my personal track or even my public track history it should be clear that if I felt the timing was right I'd be writing that book it'd be written by now <laughs> <laughs> even in this phone call there's no I'd, I'd be holding it up <laughs> I knew I wrote here. this last night. <laughs> right, yeah, I, I finished this the other day. And you're right, though. And so in my, in my personal estimation, for me, I would go, no, the timing's not right for me to write this book. Otherwise, it would be done, or I would be writing it. I'd finish it tonight. And so people need to have that kind of honesty and sensitivity with themselves. And if it feels like, no, that's not the time to do this particular thing, maybe the question is the better one to ask is, what is this moment ripe for you to do that's a very powerful that, question and then do that very powerful question i like that mm -hmm. moving on to another question somebody asked specifically about visualization techniques for dealing with procrastination do you ever mm -hmm. use visualization techniques i do i i use an advanced form of visualization that i call nebulizing and Nevelizing is a, is a nod to the mystical teacher Neville Goddard was his full name. He was mostly known as Neville. And I came up with this process. It's his process. I named it as Nevelizing. And basically what he's doing is saying, instead of imagining what you want as being off in the future someplace, you're sitting here and you're imagining your book written or your business is open and so forth. That's fine and that's good and, and imagery does work and visualization works. And the next step beyond that though, to nebulize the goal is, the, is to imagine it's already done. Okay. Go to the end result. Go to the day of or the day after and then kind of wallow in that holographic experience mentally imagining that wow, I wrote the book and I, I was reading it this morning. Or I opened the business and I stopped by yesterday and I saw a line of people that were buying things. Or I bought the new car, I've got it, it's in my driveway. In fact, I'm going for a drive right after this. You know, you nebulize the experience by having that kind of a hallucination, kind of a 3D holographic kind of an experience where you feel like it's already done. That's the visualization I like best. It's the whole body experience. Absolutely. And it's, that's, that's a personal technique that I use quite frequently. And, ah. it, and it is so, I, I don't call it the same thing, obviously. <laughs> that's very unique. Um, but certainly, you know, really visualizing it once it's there and you're in it and you're living it. And, and it's about engaging those emotions, isn't it? And really it pulling, pulling all of that together. Yeah, it actually that's is. Power. Yeah. And that's what you're doing is that you're communicating with the universe itself, but you're also programming your body and mind that this is the order you want. This is the end result you want. And the more you experience it as a finished result, the less interference you have and the less procrastination, because now it's becoming a living reality for you. 
Now it's not off in the distance. When it's off in the distance as a visualization, it's too easy to wonder, what if it doesn't happen? Mm. You know, what if it takes too long? What if it doesn't look like that? You can get around all of those, but nevelizing puts you in the finished result. And so there's no question. It's like, it's done. It's there. It's accomplished. Job done. Yeah. <laughs> What would you say, <laughs> easy, job done. What would you say are your top ways to overcome procrastination? Well, I think the top way is to, to question the procrastination beliefs themselves. Sure, yeah, which um, we've talked about already. Yeah, and so, yeah. I, but that's a big one. I mean, becoming aware of them is probably the first step. Questioning them is probably the second step. Yeah. And then third, taking action despite them is probably Brilliant. the next step. Because I think as you move forward, you start to realize that, oh, they weren't really real. The, excuse, the excuses, the beliefs, the procrastination was actually an illusion. That actually when you take the steps forward, you melt down all of that resistance by the very fact that you're proving to yourself in reality that you can do this. Yeah. So I would say those are the, the top three things. That's brilliant. And I know that is going to help so many people out there, you know. Yeah. Let's talk about the missing secret to success. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, this is a huge topic because I can talk a long time about this. I really do think there's a missing secret to success. And I believe it's not understanding the difference between the beliefs in the conscious mind and the beliefs in the unconscious mind. Ooh. Yes, they're, they're, this is very important. The conscious and the unconscious have to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. Too many people say, I'm going to attract more money, I'm going to attract more wealth, a perfect relationship, house, job, car, fill in the blank. They're doing it consciously. And they're noble, positive intentions. Those are great things to go for. But if unconsciously they have counter beliefs, what I call counter intentions, okay. such, as, such as money's bad, money's evil, money will corrupt me, all the good ones are taken, I can't find the perfect relationship, uh, I never win, it's always set up against me, um, I don't deserve it, I'm not lovable, I'm not likable, I can go on forever. Those beliefs will interfere with the conscious intention. Okay. So if you think I'm going to attract money, but unconsciously you think money's evil, you're not going to want to attract money. The unconscious is bigger and more powerful than the conscious mind. And it's so going to block you from getting anything that yes, you want. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that makes so much sense. <laughs> well, this is, that's the missing secret is that the conscious and the unconscious have to be in alignment. When they are in alignment and you say, I'm going to attract a relationship, there's no interference at that point for you to attract the relationship. But if you say, I want to attract the relationship, and you have a counter intention like, oh, I'm safer if I'm alone, yeah. you will sabotage all your efforts to find a relationship. You may find some people, but they don't last. So what the missing secret is, you've got to clear the unconscious beliefs. So okay. you're in alignment. When you're in alignment, all those things you've been wanting start to happen almost instantaneously. Now that's, I can see how powerful that is because, you know, we've <laughs> talked about um, manifesting something and, you know, making sure that you, um, you're visualizing, you're actively working on your fears and that kind of stuff. But a lot of people don't think about the, the subconscious and the unconscious. And I think you, you've hit it on the head there. It is really the missing secret. You know, people are not lining up the two and aligning them. Yeah, and that's what they need to do. And that work, they can do it on their own. I mean, I've written books about this. There's programs about this. The Miracles Coaching Program you mentioned, that's a powerful one. Yeah. I want to uh, talk to you about that now, actually. Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. I started Miracles Coaching many years ago because I realized I had the most dramatic changes in my life when I actually worked with somebody. Because you have to think about this. If you're sitting there trying to analyze your own beliefs, your beliefs seem like reality to you. Mm. So it's very difficult to find your beliefs because when you look around, you're seeing through your beliefs. You're seeing objective reality through a filter. And until somebody points out that filter, you're probably going to have a tough time seeing it on your own. Yeah. You'll look around and you'll just think, this is the way life is. When I was homeless and I was in poverty, I thought that's the way life was. Now that I look back, I go, oh, I was looking at it through poverty glasses. I was looking at it through homelessness glasses. I was looking at it through victimhood glasses. And where the glasses come from? 
my belief system. Mm -hmm. So Miracles Coaching is a way for people to work one-on-one -on -one with the Miracles Coach, somebody trained by me, so that you have an objective party trained to listen and look for your beliefs. When they find them, they can lovingly point them out to you, and you'll probably go, oh, I didn't even wow. know. Yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> that was an epiphany moment. Yes, you have the aha <laughs> uh -huh experience. And so uh, anybody interested, they can go to miraclescoaching.com, www.miracles, with an S, coaching.com, and they can get all kind of info there. Okay, and I'll make sure that I put that link in the, uh, the bit below the video so people can access that and, and get some more information. I know loads of people will be interested in that. Great, so I'll you. make sure I post that link for you. Okay. We're going to close up the interview now. Now, you also mentioned you have a free ebook that you would like to gift. Do you want to talk to us about that for a moment? Yeah, I wrote a book on, on how to attract money. It's called Attract Money Now. And I wrote it because so many people said I watched the movie The Secret or I studied the law of attraction and I managed to do attract such and such, but I'm, I'm wrestling with money. So I wrote a full book revealing a seven-step formula for attracting money. And the very first step in it has to do with beliefs, beliefs about yourself, about deservingness, about money. And the book has seven steps. There's stories, there's examples, there's some exercises at the, each, at the end of each chapter. And I'm giving it away because I'm trying to help as many people as possible. All they have to do is read the book and apply the book. Mm -hmm. I will give it to them, but I can't read it for them and I can't apply <laughs> the seven steps for them personally. That's but a they shame. Can have, they can have the book. All they have to do is go to www.attractmoneynow.com. Dot com. Okay, brilliant. Com, they can read it. That is fabulous. And thank you so much for that gift. I know it will help so many people. Again, I'll put that link in the bottom to make sure everybody's got it. And I'll also put down um, the links for your website and yep. how to get hold of you on social media. So if anybody does want to reach out and connect and have further discussions with you, all the details will be below. Oh, thank you for doing that. You're very welcome. Now, it has been such a pleasure. I could talk to you forever, but I know that, that is time is running. Time's running away with us, and I know you, you, you're a very busy man. You've got more books to write and more albums. Yeah, right, to write. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so let's finish off, Joe, by let me ask you one last question. What message would you like to leave people with about procrastination? As long as you sit there on this side of procrastination and not do anything, uh, you will never know the joy, the wonder, the magic, the miracle, the satisfaction, the pleasure, um, the happiness that you contribute to others. Once you do go on the other side and you actually get past procrastination and you complete that project, you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to have that project done and get the rewards of whatever it happens to be. But you'll also be inspiring other people, much like we talked about in the beginning, who look at what you've done and they'll wonder, how did you do it? You know, you'll be able to inspire people. But I really think it's important that if you've got something in you, this is a gift. It's a gift from divine, from God, from the universe, whatever you want to call it. It's a gift trying to be birthed through you. And you're doing a great service to yourself and to the world when you actually go through and deliver. So I would look at, instead of being on the safe side and the fear side of procrastination, look on the reward side of it. Look on the faith side and go ahead and take action beginning today. Beginning right now. Right now, yes. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. It's been such an honor and a privilege. Thank you. And oh, thank you. Godspeed to you. You're doing fantastic stuff. Godspeed to all the people watching. Thank you for the honor of being here. It's been a thrill. Thank you. It has been such a pleasure. And I know we'll speak again soon. So bye for now. Thank you again. <laughs> okay, thank you. Take care. Bye. <laughs>
the odds say that most people will do the same thing next year as they did this year. If you're ready to have 2016 be different than 2015, what's holding you back? From my experience, it is you. You're the only thing holding yourself back, be it consciously or subconsciously. So let's talk about how we can work together. I work with determined, strong, persistent and confident women to gain clarity on their vision and their purpose and to define the direction. Here are the benefits that I think you will take away when we work together. The Discover Your Direction course is six sessions over three months. We're going to meet every two weeks because in my experience it takes a minimum of three months for you to be able to take something new and begin to put it into place and to start to see some changes. When we work together, I will take you through a formula to define what it is that you want in your business and in your life. We'll delve into mastering those situations that knock you off your feet and off your path. We'll explore being more skillful at handling difficult situations. We'll gain clarity on your vision and where you're heading, as well as starting to uncover your purpose. And then we will create a toolkit for you to ensure that you're focused, you're productive, and you're taking steps to achieve what it is that you want. In those six sessions, I have a formula that we're going to follow. But listen, these are your calls. And so if we break that formula, because that's where you need to go, then that's what we're going to do. And someplace around session four, we're going to start to assess how you're feeling and what's going on and to look at the changes that you're sensing, if not the changes that you've already begun to put into place. And we're going to talk about that a little bit in session four and session five and certainly in session six. And if at the end of six sessions, you don't even see a little glimmer of light, despite your best effort and the work that you've put in, I will give you your money back. So the worst thing that can happen is you spend a few hours with me and nothing changes. The best thing that happens is we spend a few hours together and you're on your way to where you want to go. If we could work together and put you on the path to the outcome that you're looking for, which is to have a stronger purpose in your life, to understand where you're going, and to have a plan to get you there. If we can do that in six sessions to put you on the road, are you ready to begin to do that? If you are, click the link in the box below to apply for the Discover Your Direction course. Go ahead, check it out. The link's there in the box, Discover Your Direction course. Apply now and I look forward to working with you. Bye for now.